This amazing display of both mechanical and harmonic mastery includes an instantly recognizable Gambali signature pattern, triple up down. In this example, Frank is pausing for groovy effect between the first two strings of the pattern, whereas the stock version is a continuous sweep. If you're just tuning in for this installment of our investigation, be sure and check out part one where we look at this pattern in more detail. After the sweeping, Frank employs a single alternate picking string change, down up, to connect the pattern back to the top again, jumping over a skipped string in the process. We casually refer to patterns like this as sweeping because, of course, they contain sweeps, and not everyone even uses this kind of fancy picking technology. But what is actually happening here at the level of the motions is a sophisticated intermingling of sweeping and alternate picking. The need to do intricate combinations like this means that Frank is far better than just okay at alternate picking, and not just on a single string either, but also during string changes. So it is no surprise then that when we remove the sweeping component entirely, leaving only pure alternate string changes, we discover that Frank is damn great at them. And this is where things get interesting. This isn't just any old selection of notes. Examining this five-string mountain of a phrase in slow motion, we discovered that the pure alternate parts of this are composed exclusively of even numbers of notes per string, specifically twos and fours. The way up is two, then four, then two, and the way down is four, then two, then two, and then two again. And right away, this has to strike us as very weird, because Frank already showed us that when you're picking in a continuous direction, you need odd-numbered groupings to make sweeping possible. Even-numbered groupings are only for when you want to change direction. Playing a phrase like this one that moves in a continuous direction and contains only even numbers of notes per string, sweeping isn't possible. So if sweeping is your jam, then this phrase right here is actually the worst kind of picking lick because it can't even be swept. Why would he even bother with this kind of complexity? But bother he does. Here's another five string A sender that begins with two, then four, then another four, then two, and then a single note on the top string before switching back to sweeping. That's five whole strings of alternate picking, even numbers of notes the whole way. Once again, because this lick moves in a continuous direction and is all evens, sweeping isn't possible. But here's the thing, Frank sometimes chooses the alternate route even when sweeping is possible. Take this example. This is twos on adjacent strings, and because of this, you actually could use sweeping here. In fact, Frank himself does this. Sometimes, you know, people do uh, like a four note, like this, we pick four times. I go one up, one down. The reason this works is because moving back and forth between adjacent strings is a repeated change in direction. And as Frank outlined in speed picking, evens is how you change direction. And in the case of this phrase, Frank does indeed start this way, with an up-up on the first string change. But then something interesting happens. Instead of going down-down for the next one, he switches to alternate. Down-up-down, down, then up-down on the lower one, up-down on the top again, up-down on the lower, and so on. So either Frank is a masochist who wants to make his life difficult, or there is something about all of these picking sequences that he actually finds easy. And since I didn't hold a gun to his head and force him to do alternate picking, I'm going to guess that he does actually find these lines easy, and that's why he chose to play them. To add to the mystery, there's one other thing we haven't mentioned, but which you may have noticed in every one of these pure alternate examples. Frank always starts on an upstroke. The twos are always up-down, 
and the fours are always up, down, up, down. And this is true no matter which direction he's going. When ascending, he chooses upstroke. And also when descending. And once again, this is weird, if for no other reason than simple convention. If you really didn't care one way or another, you'd probably start these phrases on downstrokes because most people start phrases on downstrokes. When people talk about alternate picking, most people even say down and up. But then again, most people aren't mechanics pioneers. So maybe Frank actually does care. What if there is some specific reason that he's choosing this seemingly backwards alternate picking structure? And what if we were to look at other picking pioneers, especially ones who are known for alternate picking skill? Would Frank be an anomaly? Or could we find other elite level players who make this same seemingly unorthodox decision? This is, of course, John McLaughlin, and he would have been one of, if not maybe the most revered player in alternate picking technique around the time Frank was still woodshedding his own technique. Now, I don't know how much McLaughlin transcription you've done, but if you've ever sat down to work out any of John's lines, you will no doubt have immediately noticed something very unusual about his playing. Almost all of John's high-speed alternate picking is composed of, you guessed it, patterns of twos and fours. Take this classic McLaughlin signature phrase. This tricky circular fingering is four notes long, and surprise, just like Frank's fours, these patterns start on upstrokes. Every string goes up, down, up, down. By stacking these sequences, John can move across the strings at blazing speed, either ascending or descending. Like Frank, John doesn't seem to have a preference in terms of the direction the line moves. The only things he does seem to care about is that the number of notes per string is always even and that the starting pick stroke is always an upstroke. So something weird is going on here. It affects alternate picking and it is not a quirk of personal choice. It is actually a technique and it is used by elite players like Frank and John to make pure alternate picking work. And instead of turning the knife any further, let's just take a look at what it is. This is Frank's mysterious groups of twos, and if you like to think of alternate picking as a kind of side-to-side -side motion of your hand, then this is probably not what you were imagining. These pick strokes aren't moving side-to-side -side at all. They're going up in the air. The downstrokes are all up here, above the plane of the strings, and the upstrokes are all down here, below. And if there's one thing I know about moving from one string to another, it's that when you're down here, you're stuck or trapped as we like to say in cracking the code. You can't move to a new string because the surrounding strings are in the way and you'd hit them. So the cardinal rule of switching strings with alternate picking is that in order to switch cleanly, you can't be trapped. You have to be up here in the air, escaped. And this is starting to make sense because when Frank plays twos, he only ever moves to a new string when the pick is escaped. In other words, he only ever moves to a new string when he plays a downstroke. Watch how amazing this is. Downstroke and escape, then string change. Then downstroke and escape, and then string change. Then downstroke and escape, and then string change. And once again, downstroke and escape, and then string change. And thus, slanted picking motion. Back and forth from trapped to escaped, to trapped to escaped. What you're seeing here is not a mistake or purely random personal choice. It's a core alternate picking motion that enables fast string changes through escaped downstrokes. And in cracking the code lingo, we call it, as if you couldn't already guess, a downstroke escape picking motion. In a downstroke escape or DSX motion, the pick moves along a slanted pathway where the upstrokes are trapped and the downstrokes are escaped moving up in the air above the plane of the strings and allowing clean string changes. And you will see it all over Frank's playing.
And again, the trick here when you want to use this motion is that you craft the phrase so that the string change always occurs when you play a downstroke, because that's when the pick escapes. In other words, you want the downstroke to be the last note on the string. And this explains the backwards pick structure we saw in Frank's twos and fours. On every string of these phrases, the downstroke is the final note. So it wasn't about starting on an upstroke after all. That turns out to be a red herring. It was that the last note needs to be a downstroke in order to capitalize on the escape. And it's not just Frank who capitalizes on this. This is bluegrass great David Greer, and man, David's DSX picking motion could not be more obvious. Again, this isn't a sweeping thing. It's an alternate picking technique used for rapid string switching. In this blazing version of the bluegrass standard wheelhaus, David is using it to get across four strings of the guitar. When we're looking at DSX motion, we expect the downstroke to be the final note on each string. And sure enough, here's the first string of this phrase where David plays three notes, leaving him on a downstroke. And this is why the starting pick stroke was not the important one. You can start the first string of a phrase with a downstroke if you want, but the next string and every string after that is going to have to start on an upstroke. And here's the next string, up down. This means that the downstroke is always going to be the second pick stroke on those strings, or the fourth, or the sixth, and so on. So what flows from this is a kind of rule of escaped alternate picking, similar to Frank's mathematical rules of sweeping. On every string after the first string, you're going to have to play an even number of notes per string to maintain your downstroke string changes. Here's another two, and another. And now that we say that, this whole even numbers thing seems so familiar. Of course, it's John McLaughlin's famous pattern of fours, each of them starting counterintuitively on upstrokes. Well, now we know why that is. It's because like Frank, John is using a DSX picking motion. Here he is on The Tonight Show blazing through the jazz standard Cherokee. And here's John's DSX motion. And just as we'd expect, this solo is absolutely loaded with downstroke string changes. In the first 33 measures of the solo, the entire verse before the bridge kicks in, there are 49 string changes that occur during fast alternate picking. 45 of them are downstrokes. Look at them all. That's 92% of the string changes. This is no accident. Instead, it is the result of an elite level alternate picker optimizing his lines to be all evens. Six, two, two, six, four, Two, 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 and four. I mean, this is crazy, right? It turns out, amazingly, that there's actually a trick to alternate picking. The simplest and fastest alternate picking motions all require an even number of notes per string. So the escape pick stroke, that's the one that goes up in the air, can be the last note on the string. This lets you go over the top of the string without hitting anything and without slowing down. The genius of this is that it eliminates the need for an extra jumping motion because the alternate picking motion itself already does that automatically, lifting the pick up in the air with every escape stroke. So the pick can drop right down on the new string. Using their pro athlete levels of physical intuition, elite players like Frank gravitate toward this even numbered requirement, even if they're not always super conscious of doing so. In fact, this motion is baked so deeply into Frank's core motor memory for alternate picking that he uses it even when he's not switching strings at all. The string changes in this phrase are all sweeps, but there's some tasty three note per string chromaticism sandwiched right in the middle of it. This is the same picking sequence you'd use during economized scale playing, where you go up, down, up, and then sweep to the next lower string. That downstroke is landlocked. It's not being used for the string change. It's just in the middle of the notes on that middle string. But you can see that when Frank does this, the alternate picking motion still moves diagonally because the downstroke still escapes and goes up in the air. 
We're not actually switching strings here, so it comes right back down again on the same string, and then continues sweeping. So Frank's DSX motion is always firing for alternate sequences. It's just more obvious when those sequences are even numbered and also switch strings at light speed on their own. Amazing. I bought every guitar magazine in the 80s and nobody ever talked about this. The very idea that elite players might be using top secret slanted alternate picking motions and organizing their lines specifically to have a certain number of notes per string and yet conveniently never talking about any of this, that would have sounded seriously crazy. Like flat earth levels of conspiracy. And yet here we are seeing it in Frank's incredible technique like a textbook for efficient motion. And that's not all we're seeing. In the mystical alchemy that is Gimbali sweeping, we have to merge this slanted picking motion with the motion of sweeping to tackle signature phrases like Frank's awesome multi-up-down patterns. And in the next installment, we're gonna find out how another crucial aspect of Frank's form, one we can also see with our close-up camera, lets us do just that. So don't change that dial because we'll be right back. Thank <laughs> you. 